We made it. We made it to episode seven. How exciting is that? It's almost been a month, almost a full month of two episodes a week on the Nina Blanco podcast. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for all the love. Thank you for following me on my socials at the Nina Blanco in case you haven't done that already. I'm going to try. I'm going to try today. (laughs) I honestly didn't want to record today and I almost didn't record today. Uh, Because I'm in a mood. I am in a mood and I'm going to try my best not to be a raging bitch, but no promises. It's going to be hard and yeah, I'll try my best. Um, But I always said, you know, when I started this podcast, I'm going to talk about life as things come, life as things happen. Um, Because most of the time in my career on radio, that's where like majority of topics come from is like, okay, something happens and then let's talk about it. That's like the best way to do it, I think, right? Well, again, I can't quite express everything that I am feeling right now. Um, Basically, I, we, in my family, we lost another family member to COVID. He was way too young. It is super sad Um, and I have a, it's a lot of like mixed feelings and it's really, really weird, but I can't say a lot. I can't say a lot about it and um, oh gosh, my stomach hurts talking about this. I can't say a lot about it. I'm not trying to piss off family any more than I have in the past and it's sad and um, please get vaccinated. No, I won't shut up about please get vaccinated. It is the smart, the right thing to do. Please get vaccinated if you are able to. Anyway, we got to move on from that subject. But um, I guess assume what you want to assume about it. Uh, You know what I mean? Ah! Anyway, um, yeah, I've been staying home a lot. And it's hard um, because like, yeah, I've got all these raging feelings inside of me right now. And so I was like, okay, I don't even want to do this podcast today. But also like I haven't been doing a whole lot lately. I've been staying home because of COVID, because of Omicron. Um, But I heard that Omicron is on the decline. So I guess that's good. And then hopefully I can start doing things again because I'm freaking bored. I want to go out too. I want to go out and do things. And yeah. Gosh, Mercury retrograde needs to be over. We still got another like week or whatever. Ah, something I said last week and had teased on my social media. (laughs) I got a different response than I thought I was going to get. And it really, really pissed me off. So in particular, last week I mentioned before I started, I was like, oh my gosh, I have like butterflies in my stomach. I'm like nervous, but I have nothing to be nervous about. I just have a lot to talk about. And I got a couple comments about, oh, butterflies in your stomach. Are you pregnant? No, bitch. No. Um, you guys need to stop doing this shit. First of all, for anyone to assume, oh, someone says pregnant, to put anything on like social media publicly to another person, whether they are pregnant or not, like, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, secondly, I'm very open about the fact that I don't want no fucking kids. And I'm not joking about that. I do not want children. I do not plan on having children. And even if, because life is life, even if something happened and I were to be pregnant, you guys would never know. You would never know because I would yeet that thing out of me so fucking fast and not tell anyone about it. There might be two people in the world that I would tell about it. My fiance, the boy, of course. And then probably my maid of honor, who I'm not even talking to right now, <laughs> but she's still my best friend. And I still love that stupid bitch. I'd probably tell her too. But outside of that, no, 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 fuck no. Um, so it's really annoying when those comments happen. And I've had uh, those comments before in the past over stupid things. I feel like every girl, every girl has had to deal with this kind of stuff before. Like my stomach's not allowed to hurt without me being pregnant. I'm not allowed to have like nervous feelings or butterflies without being pregnant. I'm one time I I was like, I'm going to stop drinking. And I was like, I'm just going to do it for a month because I was like, going to the gym. I was working out super hard, but I was also drinking a lot of beer. And I was like, I need to stop drinking beer, all these damn carbs. So I'm going to stop drinking. 
and only do it for a month to like help with like whatever weight loss. And I just felt like it. And so many people, I would like go out with friends because they'd invite me out. And so like, sure, yeah, I'll go out. And then, oh, you want a beer? Like, no, 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 I'm not drinking right now. Oh, you're pregnant. Oh, you guys need to stop. It's just quite frustrating um, and it's annoying. So yeah, I got multiple, multiple people were like, oh, you're pregnant. You got butterflies in your stomach. (laughs) Nah, bitch. Even if I fucking had anything in my stomach, like I said, that shit would be yeeted so fast. (laughs) It's funny, but it's not funny. But it's kind of funny. But you guys know I don't want kids. I don't want kids. And I'm like, serious about that I'm like for real I'm not having children fuck that if I change my mind I guess I'll let you know but fuck no no oh so I've been panicking a little bit lately because <laughs> like we're at the end of January I'm getting married at the end of summer and I'm like I gotta do I gotta plan this fucking wedding <laughs> Um, I've talked a little bit about wedding planning and having to change plans and I tried to do the destination wedding and now I'm back to like pretty much my original plans except it's a wedding that is way scaled down and I'm a little bit stressed out because A, all the planning that I have left to do, B, all the money that comes along with it, C, I feel terrible even about my guest list for this wedding, which is not how you're supposed to feel when you're planning a wedding. My initial plan was, of course, invite my entire family, but we're talking about a Mexican and Italian families coming together. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Pretty much just can't afford to have my entire family come to my wedding, which sucks. That sucks. That was like, don't cry. That was like my biggest thing. When I was first like, yeah, I get to plan a wedding. My biggest thing was like, I want my whole family there. (laughs) Don't cry. But weddings are expensive. Really expensive. And something that I didn't think about when I moved away uh, from Illinois, from the Midwest, was that the day that I do get married, (laughs) where am I going to get married? You move to somewhere like Denver, Colorado, and like, how do you not fall in love with this place? Of course, I wanted my wedding here, but my whole family, for the most part, they're in Illinois, and the boys' family is spread out in a bunch of different places, and so it makes it really difficult for everyone to be able to travel, but, you know, I was hyping up like, yeah, getting married in Denver, told the whole family like yeah you gotta come to my wedding it's gonna be amazing and then you start booking things and then you start looking at prices and oh my god it costs how much per plate how much for 180 people that's just for the food oh okay (laughs) so that's why that's why the destination wedding was like well it'll make me feel less terrible Because instead of not inviting everyone, you can just assume that a lot of people aren't going to be able to make it to a destination, to Mexico or to wherever, and to get their passport and do that kind of travel. That's like major travel. Destination wedding didn't really pan out, and that's okay. I'm really, really okay with the destination wedding not working out. So okay. Plan C, I guess go back to original plans, but scale down this wedding to be able to afford it. So I'm having this wedding all in one location. It is definitely cheaper this way, but it is a smaller venue. I can't even have 180 people in this venue. Um, So okay, I guess problem solved. But then it's like you're going through the list of your whole guest list of your family, and you're like, ooh, I feel dirty I feel like not good having to pick people off the list like who do I not invite and it's like well can I at least invite all the tias and theos like all my aunts and uncles no (laughs) cool um and it feels wrong it feels wrong to like 
prioritize is that I don't know to prioritize which aunts and uncles to invite and I'm not going to be able to invite everyone and oh well so and so has less money so they probably wouldn't go anyway so I just won't invite them like it feels so wrong sent out save the dates and some people have gotten it some people have it and then some people wonder like hey I haven't gotten mine and it's like well I wasn't sending you one that feels terrible and I don't know how to fix it I don't know how to fix this issue at all um it just kind of sucks <laughs> This is not how a wedding should be. This is not how I should feel. But here we are. So, um, I don't know. I don't really know. I think I should reach out to aunts and uncles and cousins who I'm not able to invite. And I don't know, like, write them a letter. (laughs) Does that sound stupid? I don't know. I just feel bad. So, I think I'm going to write a letter. I don't know, individual, I guess. Like, if I can't invite them, can't have them at my wedding, the least I can do is write letters, right? And just explain. (laughs) I can't afford it. I'm sorry. I really want you there. But it's just too much. It hurts me. It hurts my feelings. And it's probably going to hurt their feelings. That makes me feel even worse. (laughs) But man... Catering, venues, vendors, everything. It's so expensive, dude. And I don't have a job. (laughs) I don't have a job. That's starting to stress me out. I need to get a job, guys. (laughs) I've been living off my savings. Thank goodness that's been getting me through. Thank goodness I have that. I was smart for once in my fucking life. Saved some money. But I was paying my bills and my half of the mortgage the other day. And I was like... This savings accounts, that number's going pretty, pretty low, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, stressing, stressing a little bit about money. I need to get a job. I mean, there's no radio jobs in Denver. All of the remote radio jobs get snagged up so fast. Half the time, I don't even like hear about them before they're already filled. So radio is like, oh, fucking no, which it's fine, whatever. Life goes on. It can do other things. Um, but I don't know what to do. I don't know, man. Stress. Stress. <sighs> but I'll figure it out. I always do. I'll figure it out. And I've got the boy to help lift me up and continue to just push me to keep doing what I'm doing. And he's awesome at that. And he's always said, you know, like I'm, I'm still paying my half of everything. And I have been paying my half of everything. He's like, if you need a break if you need a month um I'm too fucking stubborn and independent for that shit and I don't let him so I was like no <laughs> let me I'll still pay but yeah now I'm like oh shit like I don't I need I need some cash flow so yeah I applied to a job yesterday outside of radio in Denver one job we'll see what happens with that I need to apply to more than just one job but I'll get there Whew. Man, another emotional. Why do I get so emotional, man? Ugh. Not because I'm pregnant, so fuck you. My mom said I swear too much on this podcast, so I forgot to try before starting this episode, but I swear I'm going to try. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of people, though, that were like, I actually like you swearing. You keep it real. I like I swear a lot, and you swear a lot, so it makes me feel more normal, and I'm like, okay, 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 I like that. Uh, but yeah, Norma was like, I want to tell all my work friends to listen to your podcast, but I'm afraid to because you swear so much. (laughs) Sorry, mom. (laughs) So yeah, I got to work on that. Plus, I don't know, future employers, if they look at these, they listen to these, they watch the, is that going to matter? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I also feel like, like when it comes to job etiquette, is it different or am I lying to myself? Like, Do people care if you swear a lot? 
I mean, if I'm in an office, I'm not going to try to swear a lot, but I mean, I'm doing a podcast. I'm in the comfort of my own home. So it's like some swears are going to slip out for sure. Like, you know how they said when like Instagram and Facebook first came out, they're like, be careful with pictures you put up. If you're just out at the bars all the time, drinking and like acting a fool, these inappropriate, whatever photos of you, your, your next employer, they're going to look at them. They're going to see them and they're going to have bad things to say about you. They're going to judge you and they're not going to hire you like is that still like like sure you can scroll through my Instagram I don't care like Instagram makes me bleep out all the words that I say anyway if I have bleeped out words is that is that bad is an employer gonna be like oh this 31 year old girl swears that's bad like I don't I don't think so but at the same time like I don't know I'm not a manager I'm not a higher up I've I don't do the hiring right so I don't know (laughs) But I do need a job. So if that's the case, let me know because I got to stop swearing stat because I need some money. (laughs) Retail therapy was always my thing for like feeling down or sad or whatever. Retail therapy, man. Go to the dollar store. Go to TJ Maxx. Go to Ross. You know, all the cheap places for sure. Cause then I'd feel like a baller. I'd feel like, oh, look at look at my cart, so full of stuff. But then my total was like thirty five dollars, and it was that's the best, right? But now I'm like, I, I can't resort to retail shopping, retail therapy. I need to be smart about it. I need to be responsible. I need to not spend money as much as I possibly can. And so it's been difficult. So I'm like, okay, what are my other outlets? I need to be creative. And this podcast has really, 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 really helped with that. It really has. So thank goodness I was able to start this podcast. Um, I also like to paint. I painted a painting over the weekend. My breakfast burrito Friday painting. Um, It's pretty awesome. I love it. I spent two days. I did it in two days. But I definitely do think, yeah, it is time. It's time, Nina. It's time to go back to work, whatever that may be. I can't, I can't be a waitress again though. I know that much. I thought about just like, let me just go out and get like literally any job. Everywhere is hiring. Like I have, you know, the pick of the crop. I could go wherever I want to. What's my favorite restaurant? Like discounted sushi for life, yo. But at the same time, like I actually tried to work at a sushi restaurant one time in when I was living in St. Louis, Missouri, and I was the worst waitress at that sushi restaurant because they actually, they made me, they made you take a test. So the first month that you worked there, within that first month, you had to take a test on the menu and it basically had the full menu and then like each sushi roll I had to know every single piece of fish that was in whatever sushi roll and they like would test you and I failed and I failed and I failed and after that first month they needed so much help that they were actually like good enough you didn't quite pass the sushi test but we'll let you keep working here and I was like cool (laughs) but um I just, I get so burnt out so fast whenever I work at restaurants. Um, Not only just this sushi place, but when I first moved to Denver, I worked at um, a restaurant. It was like a burger place. And I worked at a bar that was in Capitol Hill. And working at that restaurant, I really hated it. I really hate working at restaurants. And I think I've discovered that about myself. Like I'm an okay waitress. Like, yeah, I can do my job and like flirt with customers and the guys love me. Um, so that makes for great tips, but (laughs) I just, I don't love it. I really don't love it. Working at restaurants, like it's fun for a minute, but then your feet start hurting and then you get the shitty tips and you're like, is this worth it? I don't know. Uh, But working at the bar was a lot more fun. Um, I still dealt with with food at that bar, but it was like easy orders, you know, nothing too complex. And people were mostly there for like the sports bar aspect of it. So I didn't have to worry too much about like picky eaters or, you know, asshole customers about their food necessarily. And I loved working at the bar. Um, It was a lot of fun, but it was just like I just didn't love coming home at three o'clock in the morning. And the boy was working um, like his regular job and he would get up at like 8 a.m. or whatever. And these days he's getting up at 530. And so if I were to get home at three o'clock in the morning, like there's no way, no way. But I did. I did enjoy working at the bar. Um, If I I don't know, 
if worse comes to worse, maybe I get a job at a bar that doesn't have to deal with food. I just hate having to deal with food. Like, let me just bring your drink and talk to you about sports stuff that I know nothing about. Like, let's do it. I'll do that. I can do that. Uh, but then, yeah, like I said, like, I don't know, my feet just hurt. And I just like hate these days being just like undressed with men's eyes. I just, it's not my favorite thing. It's just not. But then I'm like, maybe I can work retail. Maybe I can, I've done that before. I could just work retail. And then I've been on TikTok a lot lately and I've gone on like Karen talk and I see all these fucking Karen videos of people freaking out at just people trying to do their job. I, I'm sorry your coupon isn't working. It's in the computer system. I literally cannot do anything about it. And like I just I don't want to deal with that anymore. And then most of the time those are just minimum wage as well. There's no extra tips or anything on top of it. And I'm like, no, no, no. I just don't want to do that. And then I thought maybe it would be fun if I worked somewhere touristy how fun would that be in Denver I mean there's a lot of touristy places sure maybe it's a brewery or something like that maybe it's something above just a regular brewery and I can work at like I don't know Coors Brewery and do tours or something like that like that would be cool um like what if I worked at like the Denver Mint and did tours on money that I know nothing about, but you know, a bitch can learn. I can learn a script. That's fine. Um, we were driving home one day from the mountains and we drove past the Georgetown Loop, the train. Yeah. I went on that train with my mom and the boy, like, oh, I don't know, a couple months ago. It was, it was in the summer. It was more than a couple months ago. It was last summer sometime. And our train guy he was like super enthusiastic and like really loved trains and it was a good time and so we were driving past it again and they had a giant sign like we're hiring work at the Georgetown Loop and I was like oh that would be cool that would actually be a lot of fun like I think I would enjoy that like even if I just worked at the gift shop or whatever like that's fine um but then I was like, well, we're getting into winter and like today it's snowed a bunch of inches and it's like, I'm not, I, I don't want to, I don't like, I don't want to drive in the snow. I can't like driving in the snow, like sure I can do it. Obviously I've done it my whole life, but I don't like it. I don't want to do it. Last year at the beginning of January, the beginning of the year, which I should have known it was going to be a shit year. I um, slid on black ice and ran up into like a giant curb my car got like super fucked up luckily I was able to get it fixed and didn't have to pay too much but I'm not trying to do that and I'm not trying to do that on I-70 from Denver to Georgetown I was just like in the winter like there's just no way maybe in a couple months if I'm still like looking for a job after the snow starts to calm down then I would be willing to but like in the winter time there's just there's just no way but it would be really really cool to work somewhere that is like a tourist trap so give me some ideas because this bitch needs a job and maybe I'll just work at a tourist trap for a little while that way I just have like A, something to do and B, like some money coming in. Jeez, I really like I'm strapped for cash, y'all. I need it. Or maybe I can buck up and get a big girl job, like an actual full time job with like benefits and the salary and stuff like that. It just won't be in radio. But like that's the part that's a little bit scary for me is like, OK, well, I've never had a big girl job outside of radio. Uh, How does how do my skills translate into like a different career? And there's some resources. Um, I have a friend, her name is Marie, and she's super fucking awesome. Like she's just such a badass and she's so smart and so witty. And she created her own con company. It's called the Radio Fam. You should follow them everywhere. Uh, but she pretty much just like saw how much radio people constantly got screwed over and so she created the radio fam as kind of like a support group like we're here for you we know this is a lot of bullshit in this industry um and so like let's talk about it and that's how you get things done is by talking about the things that other people don't want you to talk about but it's important to talk about them and so that's just kind of like what she's created through the radio fam is let's talk about it and so it's been a couple of years since she first launched it and it's just exploded and I'm so freaking proud of that girl but one of the resources that she has on her website for radio people is hey if the day comes where you're ready to be done with radio or 
ready to transition into something new, read this article. Here's how everything you do in radio, all your different skills translate into something else, something else with marketing. Here's how you can write it on your resume. And I feel like a lot of radio people, they don't value themselves. They don't value themselves like at all. It's just like, cause we're like torn down little like PTSD, like battered wives from our radio husbands. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I just, we don't have a lot of as much confidence as we do have, we don't have a lot of confidence outside of radio. That's just typically kind of how it goes. It's not like that for everyone, but um, it's definitely like that for a lot of people. And so uh, the radio fam has just like really helped navigate people to the outside world outside of radio, which is really cool. So uh, yeah, anyway, my friend Marie, she launched that company and she's such a badass and go check them out at the radio fam. So she's given me a lot of insight and tips and stuff like that and she helped me with my resume and stuff like that which is super super cool of her and I love her very much (sighs) but I I definitely need a refresher I need to read that article again and I don't know try my best (laughs) okay I'm done I'm done today like I said I wasn't I didn't even want to do this in the first place just I'm just feeling weird mixed emotions I got emotional I have to write letters to my old fucking family now Ugh. Is that a good idea? Is that a bad idea? I don't know. I just feel like I should do something. Let's write a letter. I'm so sorry. Explain myself. I'm sad you can't be there. Okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm done complaining. We're done. Let me see. Let me look at a calendar really quick. When the fuck is M- Mercury bitch grade going to be done? Uh, I think in another week. I think it's Friday the 4th or sometime, I don't, I don't remember the exact date, but it's into January or February. So we still got some time to go and it's going to suck because it has so far. This one's bad, man. This one's bad. Anyway, I love you so much. I'm sorry for ranting and crying again and just letting it all, all out. But like I said, this is kind of my outlet. This is one of my outlets. You need those. If you don't have an outlet for yourself to get emotional to let it all out whether it be I don't know something on camera or a podcast or painting is another one of mine I need to get back into sewing I want to do that um find hobbies hobbies are cool hobbies are great sorry for ranting again episode seven of the Nina Blanco podcast thank you so much for being here thank you so much for following me and uh you'll have another episode on Friday talk to you then bye (laughs)